Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to discover why the camera that you've got is quite often the best one. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're going to take a look at how to stream to OBS and through various other services on your computer using a great little program called OBS Camera, which I've got pre-installed on my iPhone XR. And this essentially is a kind of intermediary, so it allows you to use your iOS device as a webcam, which at the moment with prices of webcams being astronomical, this is a really good option. And if you're looking to get into streaming or maybe you just want to do a Zoom call, Skype, all those kinds of things, then it can be a really expensive thing to do. And quite often a lot of companies won't actually pay for that equipment for you to communicate with your office or loved ones, etc., etc. So if you've already got an iPhone, and this works with pretty much most iPhones from iPhone 6, all the way up to the iPhone 12. Again, depending when you're watching this video, there may be a 13 out by then, but hopefully it should uh, incorporate that as well. So what is OBS Camera? So OBS Camera is an application which you can purchase from the Apple Store, and it costs around about £16 here in the United Kingdom, and strangely costs about $16 in the US also. So for £16, you do get an awful lot of flexibility. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I've got the device, I've got my USB cable, I've got my laptop, why do I need extra software? Well, the reason behind that is because officially, iPhone does not support webcam usage for, I guess, obvious monetary reasons. So this is a really good way of utilizing the really powerful camera in your iPhone. And this is, again, from iPhone 6 upwards. Some of the latest iPhones have got some fantastic cameras and will way, way surpass the quality that you'd get from a relatively priced webcam. Even webcams such as the legendary Logitech C920 doesn't even come slightly close to the quality you can get from this particular device. And also, it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Logitech C920 at the moment in the UK is anywhere around £80, maybe £60 if you're lucky, way, way above the days of when it used to be around about £30 to £40. So even at its best price, this is still going to save you a ton of cash. And also, again, it's going to give you far, far superior quality. Also, other benefits are you can, as most of us are aware, you can use an iPhone with things like AirPods, plug-in microphones, or even a wireless microphone like the Boya one we've got here. So if you want a little bit of more flexibility and a bit more of a professional sound to your broadcasts, your streams and your Skype calls, then this is a really, really good option. So in the video today, I'm going to show you how to set it all up, how to get it configured in OBS and how to use it as an OBS virtual camera so you can then use it in other applications such as Discord, Skype and other communication type suites. So to begin with, one of the first things you're going to want to do is to install OBS on your laptop or on your Macintosh or your Linux PC. This is really easy to do. Just go over to the OBS Studio website, download the application and install it. And you can leave it just as a blank canvas if you want to. If you're already a streamer and you've already got a camera set up, then you can just go straight in and add it as an additional source. One of the other cool benefits of this is it doesn't just work as a standalone. So if you've already got a studio set up and maybe you've got a, an expensive camera, you can always use your iPhone as a supplementary camera for additional angles, all those kinds of things. So once you've got OBS installed on your laptop or your device of choice, what you need to do then is to go onto your device and actually download the app itself. So this one is called OBS Camera. If you go into the App Store, as you probably see on some of the B-roll we've done here, you just go in and search for OBS Camera select the link as shown in the video and download the application. You will need to pay for it, unfortunately. Again, it is around about £16 or $16. But again, I think this is really good value for money. And it is a one-off fee. You don't have to pay it as a monthly reoccurring subscription or anything like that. And also it can be shared amongst multiple devices. So if you've got a bunch of iPhones lying around and you've got a ton of USB cables, then you can connect up as many as your laptop or desktop PC will actually manage. When you open up the application on your phone for the very first time, you'll be asked to grant it certain permissions, like obviously gaining access to your microphone and also accessing the camera. One other thing of note is you will have had to have had iTunes installed on your device at some point or other. And this is because when you install iTunes, it installs other software, which allows your PC or your Linux or whatever it is to communicate with your iPhone. Once you've installed iTunes, you can actually then, if you want to, go in and remove the iTunes application, but you must install it and you must run it at least once to gain the permissions. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set it up. And uh, yeah, I'm using the HD camera on my laptop, which is just here, which isn't particularly HD. And uh, yeah, I've probably broken it now. Anyway, let's move on. So we've got our USB cable installed. This is our lightning style cable, as you can see there. 
and now we're going to get the actual unit set up. So we've got the application set up on our mobile phone. So we go into OBS camera, which uh, hopefully it'll focus on. So at the moment it says there, USB waiting for connection. Now there's tons of features you can actually set in this as default. So go into the settings cog and you've got options for capture. You've got things like histograms, uh, highlight zebras, shadow zebras, focus peaking, flip front camera. So you can choose between the front or the rear cameras, whichever is easier for you. You've got high standard, custom. So I normally do 1080p, 50 frames per second. So I've set it as that. But you can, if you want to, you can set exotic resolutions up to kind of 4K and beyond and also frame rates of uh, crazy, crazy limits. So anything from two frames per second or right the way up to 230. So those are kind of in there, they're options, but the ones that are common, they've put in the top here just to make life a little bit easier. Again, you can, if you want to, you can just choose kind of like a high, standard, low, and options for audio input. We go into output, so there's an option for USB, which is what we're in at the moment and you can use the NewTek NDI, which is like a wireless feature. I've not tried that out yet. Maybe we'll do that in a follow-up video. And you've got the USB encoding settings. So you've got your bit rates and keyframes, etc., etc. So that is essentially uh, done. So we'll choose a 1080p and essentially we're gonna have it like this. So you've got options as well. So you've got the zoom, you've got your exposure, you've got your ISO settings. All of it is set to auto at the moment. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add this as a device in OBS. So going into OBS, what I'm going to do is click on the plus icon and new scenes. So we'll call this uh, iOS cam and hit OK. So now we've got a blank source area. So what we want to do now is to click on the plus icon and what we're looking for is the iOS camera. Now if your device or your OBS isn't showing iOS camera, there is an option you can download from their website, the actual kind of plugins, etc. But generally, once you've been over there, all the details I'll put in the video description for all the downloads for this. So there are there are some downloads. Now, if we go over to OBS Camera, you've got tons of stuff there. So basically, if you go from the home page, you can download everything which is there, as you can see on the screen there. Again, we'll put some links. They do show some uh, before and after. So that's a Logitech versus an iPhone 6. So as you can see, difference is pretty insane. So yeah, okay. all the camera controls, so you've got manual, lens selection, histograms, exposure, etc. Low latency, Mac OS or Windows and audio support. And you've got the option again, USB low latency or Wi-Fi plus NDI. And the download is at the bottom. So you've got the install plugin for OBS Studio. So you, you want to do that, click on the link, download the actual OBS Studio settings. So you've got option which you want to connect USB. So click on USB and then you can basically download the uh, the plugins there. So that into the plugin, save it somewhere, install it with OBS closed and then reopen OBS. So yeah, I guess you should have done that first really, but hey ho. So anyway, we're going to add our source. So click on the plus icon and we choose iOS camera and you've got create new so you can choose it iOS camera. You can change the name of it. So we'll say camera one because we may add more and click OK. So at the moment it says iOS device and we've got none and there's nothing listed there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in the USB cable into our iPhone XR. And there we go. USB is connected there. And as you can see, what is being seen on the phone is being seen on the screen, which is absolutely cool. If you don't see yours for some reason, then you can just go in and do refresh devices. It comes out now, it says Mike's iPhone and you can do reconnect the device and it'll reconnect. You've got latency options, so you've got low and normal. I'm gonna leave it in low latency and click OK. So this is stretched immediately to the right size for the actual uh, display there, 1080p. And actually it does look sharp as heck. If we go back to the uh, webcam recording, which is my built-in webcam, this looks absolutely awful. And uh, yeah, it's pretty shocking. It's not a great camera to be honest with you, but obviously for Look at the difference in quality it is absolutely insane. So what I'm going to do is now, now that this is set up and I'll spin this around a little bit so you can actually see what is going on. So you can see there is uh, me in the camera. Hi. And this is the setup. So you can see what's going on here. So you can see how it's been recorded, but just look at the quality. Look at the, uh, the image quality is fantastic. The colors, all that kind of stuff. And it seems to be focusing really, really well, which is uh, 
well, a bonus in itself. So now I'm going to set up the iPhone. I'm going to put it on, um, well, I haven't got a tripod, so I'm going to put it on some books just to hold it steady. And I'm going to try and do the outro to this video purely through this link. So we'll see what it's like. Also as well, what you can do, which uh, if we go back and take a look at the actual application itself. If you do want to use this in another application, then what you can do is you can click on uh, over this side, start virtual camera. And then you can open up things such as OBS and you can choose OBS virtual camera. So you don't have to use OBS. It does need to be running in the background, but you can quite easily have that running, set it as a virtual camera, go into something like Discord, which will open up now. So in Discord, I've got it open now, as you can see. So now we've got, you've got camera settings. So you can just choose OBS virtual camera and then click on test video. And there we go. So that is our uh, iPhone, as you can see, straight into Discord. And this works in pretty much most things such as kind of Zoom, Skype, all those kinds of things. Anything that supports OBS virtual camera, which is a ton of things, will work absolutely fine. So I'm going to get this set up now so we can do uh, an outro and see what this is actually like. Okay, so there we go. There is the uh, the camera set up. It's a little bit shaky, unfortunately. Cat is holding it because I don't have a tripod for it. But hopefully you can get a really good idea. I'm currently recording with my Lumix G80 using the lab mic here. And also I'm using the mic which is basically built into the iPhone. So it would be interested to see what that actually sounds like. Obviously, depending on how creative you are and how kind of knowledgeable you are, you can always use the audio from another device and actually kind of synchronize it in in post-production if you're doing pre-recorded stuff. Or you can actually just use another USB microphone into OBS, all those kinds of things. So tons and tons of flexibility. But what first strikes me is actually the quality of the image. Considering the G80 is around about kind of 700 pound camera with the lens and the iPhone, again, around about a similar sort of price, maybe 600 brand new. But for a phone to be giving out the sort of quality that it is via a USB connection into a laptop, for streaming purposes, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So if you want to save yourself the expense of going out and buying yourself a dedicated streaming camera and all that kind of associated hardware, such as a Elgato streaming device to capture the actual audio, all that kind of stuff uh, for the cost of a USB cable and using your existing phone and just £16 for the app, I think it's really, really good value for money. And certainly if you want to see more features about this, please do let us know in the comments section below. We will try and do an update on the NDI, the wireless side of it which I'm particularly interested in for streaming purposes, adding it to my existing setup so I can do handheld wireless shots when I'm doing PC builds and stuff. I think it's going to be fantastic as soon as we can get it all up and running. So let me know what you think of the quality in the comment section below. If you want to check out more information about this particular app, again, I'll put the links in the video description. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.